Here we have another example of root locus. In this example, the controller is k times s plus 1, and the plant is 1 over s squared times s plus 3.6. The root locus is, of course, the location of all poles, as this value of k changes from 0 to infinity. The characteristic equation that we need for root locus is 1 plus k times a function of s. And because this is a unit feedback loop, our characteristic equation will simply be 1 plus the multiplication of these two functions. So we are good. We can now use s plus 1 divided by s squared times s plus 3.6. That is the characteristic equation. That is our function g of s. Where again, the characteristic equation is 1 plus k times g of s equals to 0. We have three poles. This is s squared and the s plus 3.6. And we have 1, 0, and negative 1. So n minus m, n minus m is 2 for 3 poles and 1, 0. When you have an excess of 2 poles, we now know that we have two asymptotes. The first one is 90 degrees, and the second one is negative 90 degrees. This is again covered in lecture 11. The centroid of these asymptotes are located at sum of all poles, 2, 0, 0, plus 0, minus 3.6, that's location of the other pole, minus all zeros, negative 1, divided by n minus m, that is 2. The result here is 3.6 plus 1, 2.6 divided by 2 is 1.3, negative 1.3. Now let's calculate the breakaway or breaking points, if any. To calculate the breakaway or breaking points, we set k to p of s, and now isolate for k or p of s here. So k, which is p of s, is equal to negative 1 over g of s, which is negative s squared s plus 3.6 divided by s plus 1. Now, to find the breakaway points, we need to take the derivative of p of s with respect to s. This is p of s, and set that to 0. As we saw in the previous example, this is easy to calculate. We have two fractions here. We can take the derivative of them. Following the rules that we saw in the previous exercise, set that to 0 and so for s. This is simply calculus, very simple calculus. I'm going to skip that step and just, and just give the values of s that satisfy this equation. And those values are s equals to 0 and s equals to negative 1.65 plus minus 0.93j. So again, these are the values of s that satisfy the derivative of p of s with respect to s equal to 0. What do we see here? We see a value of s equal to 0. That's a real number. And we see a complex number here. So this is not a breakaway or breaking point. We know that breakaway and breaking points are always real numbers. We have s equal to 0 as a potential breakaway or breaking point. We now need to determine whether s equals to 0 is part of the root locus or not. Let's write it here that our potential breakaway point is s equals to 0. We still need to verify this assumption. Now let's locate the poles and zeros on the s-plane. We have two poles at zero, that's because of the s squared. We have a pole at negative 3.6, and we have a zero at negative 1. We also know that the centroid of our asymptotes is at negative 1.3. One goes up at an, at an angle of 90 degrees, the other one goes down at an angle of negative 90 degrees. So let's draw them as well. Here is one of them at 90 degrees, and here's the other one at negative 90 degrees. Now where is the root locus? Always to the right of an odd number of poles and zeros. So here, if we start the count from positive infinity, we have 0, 
when you cross these two poles as zero, we have a count of two, but that's an even number. So there is nothing here. We encounter a zero here, the count becomes three, up to here where the count becomes four. So the only odd portion is the portion between negative one and negative three. So obviously, because this part is occupied and there is a pole and a zero, that to delineate those, that, that part, this pole needs to go to that zero. Now what happens to these two guys? Well, they need to go to the asymptotes that are centered at a negative 1.3. Our breakaway point is at zero, and zero is indeed part of the root locus because that's where the poles are initially located. So the solution is now that one goes up, the one goes downwards. And this now completes the root locus of this system.